So what, we, what we're in right now is our malt room, um, also our mill room. Uh, basically, when I get a shipment of malt in, uh, it all comes in here, and then when I'm ready to do a brew, uh, I gotta throw it in the mill. And this one is our uh, carafa, which is a very oh, wow. yeah, there's dark a big difference. malt. It's like a coffee bean color. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and it actually tastes like coffee, too, if you... Uh, Want to go ahead and eat some? Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's good for you. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. mm. That particular malt goes into our Schwartz beer. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you get the roasty flavor, a mm -hmm. little bit of yep. a coffee flavor. Going, I will actually get all my malts together, and then start adding them into the mill, and then I'll go through the mill. So as we follow this wonderful, mm -hmm. follow it. piping, it goes up and around and over and out. The green is moving through this pipe, which uh, has gone above all our tanks down this way, um, and it comes all the way into this uh, funnel-looking container. Uh, this is what we call a grist hopper. And basically, uh, I usually mill the day before a brew and let it sit in here uh, the day before. <laughs> so I come in the day of the uh, brewing, and I will actually open these gates up right here and then let the, uh, the, the grist all fall into the kettle. Um, and actually inside the kettle is a uh, propeller looking thing called an agitator. It'll spin all the grains in the water and mix it up real nice. Um, that way I don't have any dough balls which uh, will limit my conversion of fermentable sugars. Here at Gordon Biersch we actually do uh, more of a traditional style brewing, uh, German brewing. Uh, which means that I'll do six steps uh, in my mashing pro uh, process. Basically, I'll start, like I said, at 113 degrees, raise it up to uh, other temperatures, let it sit anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes, depending on the rest. Um, the idea is you're activating different enzymes that naturally occur in the grain itself. And what this does is either starts uh, converting uh, proteins into smaller proteins, uh, but the two major enzymes that we were really concerned about are beta amylase and alpha amylase. And these are what uh, starts breaking down the starches into fermentable sugars. And this is what we're really looking for in the brewing process. So as I go from here, I actually have to send it over to this tank. Uh, this is my louder ton. Um, this is where I'll actually stop, uh, start separating the grain from the wort. The wort is a sugary substance that we've created through the mashing process. Um, and as I start separating that, uh, it'll go into this guy right here, which is my grant. Um, before I send it back over into this kettle, um, the idea is to send it through and recirculate it back on itself. Uh, this will help clarify the wort, um, and that way I'm not sending particles through um, into the boil. After uh, I do my recirculation, um, I then uh, send it back into uh, where I mashed in. And this is a uh, mash slash brew kettle. Um, once I'm done with the mash, I've got to get in there and clean it and make sure it's ready for the boil. So in the brewing process, we go by barrels. Mm -hmm. The barrel is 31 gallons or two kegs, okay. 15 and a half mm -hmm. uh, gallon kegs. Um, so this is uh, a 15 barrel brew system. I get about 400, the math is a little off, so you gotta bear with me, about 465-ish uh, gallons wow. per brew. Mm -hmm. um, and then each of my ferment, uh, fermentation tanks are uh, 30 barrels, so about 935 gallons. That's a lot. Yeah. So after 90 minutes, once again, we're German style, so we have to stick to the Rhein Eiskabel, which is the German beer purity law of 1516. Originally accounted for three ingredients, uh, malt, water, and hops. However, in the 1800s and the invention of the microscope, they discovered yeast was a very important pro uh, part of the brewing process, so they amended it to include yeast. So it's really four ingredients. You can see uh, fermentation is in action here. Um, what is happening is the yeast is uh, feeding off all those sugars that I've created through the brewing process. So what's happening is it's feeding off those sugars, creating alcohol, and creating CO2. 
Most of our beers here are lagers. Uh, the difference between lagers and ales. Um, lagers like to ferment at cooler temperatures, about 50 degrees, um, and then ales like to ferment at 70 degrees. And what this uh, does is it. One, the yeast will actually create different flavors in the beer, and it will actually give a little bit more fruity flavors to it, um, especially our uh, Hefeweizen, which is an ale. You'll notice a very clove and banana flavor that comes out. Um, but all uh, the rest of our beers, which are lagers, lagers like to ferment with a very crisp, clean flavor. And for, uh, for a lot of our lagers, it takes about 35 days from grain to glass. Um, and the Hefeweizen takes me about two to three weeks. So there's a quicker, quicker fermentation period with the Hefeweizen, which is a male, and there's a little bit slower process with the lagers. All right, uh, here we are at the Christopher Walken cooler. Um, he's uh, one of my favorite guys, and hey, you know, this is beer. Um, but what's behind the door is the more magical part of this whole situation. Um, so all the beers are actually served from these tanks in here. Um, these are 868-gallon tanks, um, and from here they're just like big kegs, really. You know that they just uh, get sent down into the ports on the bottom and sent all the way back to that back wall of gadgets and gadgets. Uh, those black boxes are actually. Uh, beer pumps that helps kind of push the beer along all the way to our bar. Uh, we actually cool those towers down. Uh, there's a line of glycol, which is a coolant that follows the lines all the way um, and keeps the beer nice and cold, fills up that tower with glycol, and a tube runs right through with the uh, beer. So you have a nice cold beer all the way through. Matt, thank you so much for giving us this great tour of the brewery. It was very educational. Can anybody come and schedule a tour with you? Of course, of yeah. course. Come on in, I'll give you the whole spiel. And what about sampling? Can you sample the beers of after? Of course. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This has been great. Yeah, well, thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Have a good time. Good. That's a wrap with Baldwin 360.